In this video, we're going to be testing the AmpMate with the Amp Mark II DB. Hey there, Kyle Shields from UltimateReloader.com. So, in this video, we're going to be annealing some six dasher brass from Alpha in this case. We've already shown the AmpMate, the Amp Mark II DB, and the original Amp Mark II on the channel plenty of times before. So, I'm not going to go in the full fledged setup of every one of these, but I did want to show you how much easier it is to use the AmpMate with the new Mark II DB. So next, I'm just gonna briefly go over what I did to set up the AmpMate on the Mark II DB. All right, so what did I do to set up the AmpMate on the Mark II DB? Without going into too much detail, I just kinda wanna fly by the process that I did. So first of all, I updated the Mark II DB's firmware, which you can find their information on the website on how to do that. It's a simple download. Just plug in your Mark II DB with the included USB-C cable, upload, the, let the firmware do its thing, and you're good to go. I analyzed a six dasher case and saved it into the database. Now we've covered using the database before, which is in the name, DB. That's just gonna help with the convenience of annealing this brass in the future again if we'd like to. I installed the AmpMate unit, which is as simple as putting the unit down on top of the DB. Then I adjusted the shell holder angle ever so slightly. Now we're using the same shell holders we did last time with the 6.5 Creedmoor brass, shell holder number one, since they're the same case base diameter essentially. Then I adjusted the case feed guide, which is this guy right here. It slides up and down. I adjusted it lower to be just ever so slightly above the top of the case for six dasher. And since 6.5 Creedmoor is much taller than six dasher, I had to lower this. I lowered it about 1.5 millimeters or 0.058 inches above the uh, case mouth. And it seems to be feeding through the shuttle very reliably. And what that does is just prevents the case from tipping back and forth and falling through the unit essentially. Then I added the Dillon case feed bowl, and we're using that Creedmoor Sports uh, amp stand again to support that. What I did was some preemptive testing here with some six dasher brass. This was before I cleaned it. I, I didn't really tumble brass yet. I just wanted to make sure everything was functioning, and you could tell it was. So what I wanted to go over next, and the real big feature with this, is the updated menu settings for the AmpMate on the AmpMark 2 DB. All right, so let's dive into the AmpMate menu settings on the Mark II DB. So in order to get to the AmpMate menu, you simply, on the main screen, just go over one by hitting the arrow, and it'll be pretty obvious that you're at the AmpMate setup because it'll say AmpMate setup. So just tap on that. Now we've got all the settings for the AmpMate right here, and I'm just gonna fly by some of these because they're pretty self-explanatory. So you got show holder jog, which will move the direction of the show holder. And this helps during your setup when you're setting up your case feed to see if it's reliably feeding or not. So for example, you might wanna move the show holder back. And if you just tap on that arrow, it will move the show holder to the up position so you can test your case feed with your case feed slider here. And you can move it back down out of the way. So that might help clear things or again, help you during your setup. We got the Cal eject numbers. They've changed this to make it even better since the Mark II, because now you got a numerical value for where the servo position is. But I'll get to that in just a second, um, in a little bit more detail. Then you got your load speed, which is fast or slow. So that setting is might change depending on which caliber you're using. In this case, we're using fast for smaller calibers such as the six dasher. But if you have a magnum caliber, you might wanna slow it down a bit if you're having some reliability and feeding, things like that. Then you got your servo, your insert servo and eject servo. And L and R are the directions for your servo motors of which way they're going. So when you set this up, they may be moving the opposite way. And what I mean by that is your servo eject might be trying to move backwards instead of swipe forwards. And same for your case insertion servo, it might be hitting the rear and not moving forward at all. And so if you see that, this allows you to change that direction. You probably won't have to change this ever again once you get that setting correct. In this case, when I set this up, it was fine out of the box and ready to go and I didn't have to change anything with our server motors. So. Next, I wanna go over that cowl eject in a little bit more detail, like I was saying. All right, so let's go back to that cowl eject settings that I said I would reiterate on here. And that is our second option right here. And you'll see up 
down, and then a numerical value as the third line there. And so like I said, on the original AMP uh, Mark II, it was just up and down. You didn't have really any indication of what the servo number was. So now you can actually see a numerical value, which might help reference where this position is. And so what that number is, is the angle of where this show holder is resting. This whole little arm assembly right here, where it's resting, that is what that number is. It's just a positional data of where it is at in the world, so to speak. So you can change this number to optimize where it sits when it is ejecting. And most of the time when it does its initial calibration, when you turn on the unit, the number you, you probably won't really need to change the number. The only time you might need to change it is if things aren't ejecting reliably or if you're using a Magnum cartridge, a bigger cartridge with a lot more weight. Because what tends to happen is those heavier cartridges will pull this down a little bit. So since this is free moving, if you move it up or down, it allows you to adjust where that resting position is. So usually you want 45 degrees of the resting position, so about like this. You can kind of look at an angle and get a judge of where it should be. But again, you'll want to test things out and just see for yourself each caliber what is working best. But if you're seeing that things are getting stuck or if it's not resting right or if it's falling, just give this, a num this number a little bit of an adjustment. So that's pretty much it for that setting. But when I turned on our unit, it set at 831, and I didn't really need to touch it at all. It looked, looked fine. So what we'll do next is I'm gonna dump these cases in, and we'll do a demo of annealing some six dasher automated. All right, so I loaded up our six dasher brass into the case feed bowl, and then I turned the knob to adjust the speed to tweak that ever so slightly so we're feeding reliably. All we have to do now is start our automated annealing. So let's go to our Aztec run, and then like I mentioned, I had already set up everything, did an analyze pass and all that, and saved it into our database. So we're just gonna pull up our database. You'll see at the bottom here, six dasher alpha. We're gonna load that. Load. Now all we have to do is hit the start button and watch it run. All right, so as you see, we're up and running here and everything seems to be dialed in. Overall, so far, setting up the amp mate on the Mark II DB, going through the menus, fine tuning the adjustments, um, adjusting those numbers, like I said, if you need to, or your, even your servo settings if you need to, is a whole lot easier than using those three buttons of yesteryear. <laughs> so now that you have a touch screen, you can visually see where everything is and have a little bit more of a reference of what the amp mate is doing or what it needs. All right, so I could watch this thing go all day, but we got to wrap up here. So what I'd like to know is, do you anneal as part of your reloading process? And if you do, what are you annealing for? What do you reload? Let me know in the comments section below. And um, until next time, I'll see you all later. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're going to want to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you want to learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're going to want to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.